Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Thursday, November the 9th, race number four at Penn National. Let's take a look at this field. We are going six furlongs. It is a condition claimer for fillies and mares. Head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com. Download your free Formulator Pass performances and handicap along with us as we take this field in post position order. And Matt, the number one market tails, only one for 19 in her career. She hasn't won a race in about a year and a half, but she's got a little bit of tactical speed. A little bit of tactical speed, I suppose. That's probably the only real positive that I can say about this horse right now. She's not fast enough. She doesn't like to win races. And, you know, I, I just don't really see a, a trip that she's going to work out from the inside. Three to one on the morning line for the number two, Spunky Linda. Spunky Linda won her maiden over course and distance way back in June. Two starts back, finished third. Thought that was kind of a weird trip where she was tracking inside. Mm -hmm. It looked like she took a little bit of an odd step, but then she was able to re-rally to finish third, only beaten a half length, but she was just run off her feet last time out. She was running at the end of the race. Maybe she needs a fast pace up front. I'm not sure she's gonna get it. It's possible. She's gonna get some class relief here going from nine winners to two at the 25 level down to the 50 here. It's worth noting that winner that day who ran off and hit one by 10 came back to win next out with a 70 so I suppose that bodes well for you. Uh, Spunky Linda, the interesting thing that I think anyway, her only victory thus far is coming gate to wire fashion right. and I don't think she's fast enough to make the front. Uh, if you think that she can win from off the pace, she put in a little bit of a bid too back, like you say, where she was just outrun but came on at the end. If you think she can do that, that's great. I just don't know if she's going to get the pace. She has exceeded par for this level, though, with that maiden win, 61, the buyer par, 56. Act of Kindness is really an interesting horse, the number three. Her most recent start on August the 12th, she just ran away from horses at Laurel. It was only a maiden race. It was over a muddy track, but she dominated that field. Then she went to the sidelines for a long time. What do you do in a situation like this? I know you usually like horses like mm -hmm. this, horses that are not proven losers, facing the one for 19s, the one for 20s in yeah. the world. But what do you do with a horse that wins by the length of the stretch and then goes away? Um, well, it's not even so much the, the fact that she went away. It's the fact that she went over a wet track. And I don't know what you're going to get as far as weather is concerned. I, I just... Boy, we always talk about it. You can get horses that can look brilliant or look terrible on a wet track, whether they love it or they hate it. To me, I look at what she had done prior to that, and I say, that's the outlier by far. And it happened to be when you had something different for what it's worth, the runner-up came back to win next out with a 47 buyer. The fourth place finisher came back to win next out with a 50. I don't like this horse. The number four is always satisfied. Who lifetime is one for 20, seven second place finishes. The lifetime win came over a synthetic track. She actually has finished first twice in her career, mm. both over synthetic tracks. She was disqualified once. Her last race was slow. Is it coincidental that that race was coming from the synthetic to dirt and she's just a better horse on a synthetic surface? Or are you going to say, well, well, she doesn't win often and she burns a lot of money mm -hmm. as the beaten favorite, she still at least retains her solid form. She was second in that race, second in the prior two at Presque Isle. Yeah, she's in good form. That doesn't mean that I think that she's a, a win candidate. To me, she's the perfect kind of underneath key where if you're looking for a horse and an exotic playing, you know, an exact a try or a soup or something like that, she's one that I would use underneath. The slow fig, yeah, obviously it's a concern, but I think she's going to get a decent enough setup where she can sit a little bit off of it, not come from 100 out, make her run. I don't think she's good enough to win, though. Freudland, the number fives, only lifetime win came on the turf. She is going route to sprint after setting the pace in a, in a pretty decent $10,000 now winner, a two life mm -hmm. claimer, with a runner up came back to run third with a 37 buyer, then at least won a race with a 32 buyer, but her figs on the main track, just slow. Dad, the big thing for me, I look at it and say, get her back to the grass whenever you possibly can. You see all those races that have been washed off the turf, and you look at her three turf races, maybe the exception of the first time out. She came back and she won, she broke her maiden on the turf, and then she came back and lost by a neck. I think she wants grass. The six is Majestic Pick, and before we get to Matt's analysis of Majestic Pick, let's see what the Timeform U.S. pace projector has in store for this race. And they have Majestic Pick out there on the early lead. Uh, you're not, you don't exactly want her out there. It's not bad if she does get it. I was going to say, I mean, if she gets it, fine, so be it. I, in a perfect world, I would prefer the three act of kindness goes, and the six sits just off like she did in her most recent start. She broke her maiden for 10, and I know lead changes, that's not going to be a perfect thing because you see on the far turn she was very early to change and then just inside the eighth pole she popped back to her left and stayed on. 
I kind of look at it and say, guess what? At the 15 claiming non-winners at the right level, don't worry about it. Just look at the figs, highest last out, time form number in the field with an 85. She beat a couple next out winners mm -hmm. in that race. The runner-up returning to score at Laurel with a 45 buyer speed figure. And if she doesn't make the lead, at least she has a nice outside post. And, you know, I won't be surprised if the pace is a little bit faster than what time form U.S. has it. I wouldn't be surprised if Spunky Linda tries sure. to go. Act of kindness, fresh off the layoff, perhaps trying to go. A majestic pick might be sitting in a good spot tracking three wide. The number seven, Kareem Strong, also has a lot of speed. And last time out, I don't I don't really saw where she bore out on the turn. I, I didn't yeah. see that. <laughs> but she, she showed good speed early. Midnight Union was pressuring her. She was the favorite in that race. We talked about mm -hmm. her. And Kareem Strong was game to hold second over Spunky Lad. You mentioned Midnight Union coming back to win with a 70 buyer. This horse off the drop for this barn, two to one on the morning line, is the horse to be. Yeah, the interesting thing to f figure out is where is this horse going to be position because thus far her only win in her career has come send. in gate to wire fashion. If you send, then I think she has a giant chance. If they think that on the class drop that she's just going to be better than these horses, I think they're going to be in deep, deep water. I think, again, if you send, she has a giant chance. There's a part of me that wonders if they're going to think the opposite and say, we're just better, we'll park ourselves off. If they do that, I think she's in deep, deep water at a short number. The eight is what a beautiful mess. Can you make a case for what a beautiful mess simply for the fact that last time out they stepped her up into the allowance ranks, she was woefully overmatched at 32 to 1 and unsurprisingly didn't do any running. Two starts back at a comparable level here, this horse came with a good late run. 41 buyer, still a little bit light, but she's still one of those lightly raced horses with at least a bit of upside. I picked her second. I kind of look at it and say the outside post, she's going to be able to work out a decent enough trip. Depends how fast they go, obviously, but I agree with you 100%. She was in too tough last time. You go to that run two starts back. It's more comparable to what we'll be getting on Thursday night. I think she has a puncher's chance to hit the board. Let's take a look at our selections for our Thursday formulator race of the day. Matt likes the six majestic pick coming off that maiden win at Laurel for trainer Donald bar you're going six eight four and two yeah and i agree with you with the seven i think the seven is probably the horse to beat but i almost wonder if this is one of those instances a bit of a trap where they think that class relief is just going to be enough to get her over the edge if she doesn't make the top i think she's gonna have a big problem i watched several of always satisfied's recent races at presque isle downs maybe i was simply fooled by the synthetic i don't think she's as bad as that one for 20 mark makes her out to be and her last race at penn national while slow she got bumped a little bit coming out of the gate bumped in the opening furlong, came with a three wide bit on the turn and then just does what she does. She finishes second. I'm hoping the pace is a little bit faster than what the pace projector has it. I'm hoping she drifts up a little sure. bit off that four to one because she always seems to get bet. One last chance for the four, always satisfied. I'll go four, three, seven, and two. If you're playing the Thursday race of the day from home, not only is there a $300 sign up bonus, you know this deal, but exciting news. There used to be a rule in Pennsylvania that any customer within 35 air miles of a track was restricted. You could not open a DRF bets okay. account. No. Well, that's on American. Now it's open. $300 sign up bonus anywhere in the state of Pennsylvania. DRF.com forward slash fall promo code fall 300. Approximate post time for race number four at Penn National is 722 Eastern. Good luck.